everybody so I'm back with another do's and don'ts and this time we're doing it for colored pencil I'm going to be going through the main mistakes and things to avoid when drawing a face in colored pencil if you want to do it realistically if this is a bit too fast for you then I have got the do and the don't version over on my patreon completely in real time with voiceover so you can follow along with me every step of the way so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out but let's get on first with the don't drawing I'm going to go through things to avoid when drawing a face in colour pencil. Like I said, colour pencils are a very tricky medium to work in and so that's why I felt like I needed to do a whole different video on do's and don'ts specifically for colour pencil because it's a lot different than using graphite. So I'm starting with the eyes and I'm going to list a few of the key mistakes people make when drawing eyes. And firstly with colour pencils it is using the black a bit too much. So using it for the creases in the eyelid, to line the iris and quite a lot in the skin tone itself. And so you don't need to use black that much. I'm going to be talking about some alternatives when I do the do version. So another thing is not using enough colours with the iris, not using enough different colours to get the shadows in and to get a realistic look and also not doing enough of the realistic pattern and the texture in the iris. Also another mistake is not using correct skin tone colours. So not actually using colours that work well together and complement each other. As you can see with this don't version there's a lot of different colours. There's pink tones, more orangey tones and green tones and they just don't gel well together. With the eyebrows a common mistake is not making them look like they actually fit in with the skin. Just drawing two like shapes and colouring the whole of the eyebrow in and not really thinking about how it works with the skin. Also with the eyelashes, it's important not to just do them really straight and not use blunt pencils, otherwise the kind of eyelashes are going to look like spiders legs and stuff like that. And finally, another key mistake with the eyes is not doing enough grey shading on the white of the eyes. So moving on to the nose, a few common mistakes that aren't too many is doing the nostrils too circular and actually outlining the sides of the nose and doing too much heavy outlining and shading, generally for all of the features actually. Another mistake is again when it comes to skin tones not using those colours that gel together I've used different skin tones on the nose than I did around the eyes and so a lot of people when colouring different features and different areas use different skin tones so it doesn't look like it works together and transitions nicely between those different areas. Moving on to the lips, a common mistake is again outlining a very harsh line in the centre of the actual lips, that centre line, and also around the top of the lips and the bottom of the lips. Another thing is to like do your burnishing too early, not do enough layers and really press hard on that pencil straight away. When it comes to the creases on the lips, you also don't want to do them in lines that are going straight down and make them look too harsh. Everything just looks very harsh very early on. Now moving on to the skin, when it comes to the skin you don't want to be doing messy pencil strokes, you also don't want to be doing really heavy kind of pressing hard on your pencil early on because it means that you're not going to get a smooth outcome for your skin and it's going to be very hard to blend out all of those messy pencil strokes. Also you don't want to be using blunt pencils throughout this whole process, you want to keep your pencils as sharp as possible at all times. Otherwise you're not going to get into the white crevices of the paper which means that you're probably going to get a very grainy look unless you really press hard. Pressing hard on the pencil means that it's hard to add layers over the top. So at the moment what I'm doing is I'm pressing really really hard on those pencils straight away and when it comes to adding the highlights because I've added so much colour pencil already to the skin it's hard to get some bright highlights showing up and so you don't get much contrast and all of the values are very similar you can't get those really bright highlights to contrast against those darker and mid-toned values so it kind of just falls a bit flat another thing is again not using the right colors for those shadow tones on the cheeks there with shadows but I've just done them very messily and it doesn't work well with the skin tones you can't really tell what skin tone she's meant to be because I've got so many different colors going on Another mistake is then when you're trying to refine everything a bit more, going out and actually outlining everything, too much of a harsh outline around the jawline isn't great and it will start to make it look more cartoony if you start to outline everything. And cartoony is a great style but I'm talking about realism here and for realism we don't have outlines around our features. 
Moving on to the hair, and there's a few common different ways that people draw hair which won't give you the best outlook. One is just going very messily back and forth, trying to draw in every strand of hair and using the black pencil quite a lot. And so I used the black pencil quite a lot here and then I went over with a brown ochre and they're not the right colours. Adding that tone onto the black just gives quite a green look and not the brown, like it was a really chocolatey brown her hair and it just doesn't work well. I will actually attach a link to the reference photo in the description so you can have a look and try this out if you want yourself. Another common mistake is actually using the eraser to pull up big clumps of highlights and even though using the eraser to pull up little flyaway hairs is could be a good thing, you don't want to do it so harshly and like I did where I've tried to erase so much coloured pencil that it actually makes little bits of the coloured pencil stick to the paper. It doesn't give a really soft look. Another mistake is outlining your clumps of hair. And again, this is great if you want to go for that cartoony style, but if you're doing realism, you don't want to do harsh outlines around every clump of hair. A different way that you could be making your hair look unrealistic is using the wrong colours. So I used a very orangey tone when it's more brown and a very unnatural looking bright yellow when even though it's a bit blonde, it's not bright a luminous yellow. For the skin and on the shoulders and neck, I'm just doing the same sort of mistakes, using the wrong colours, being too heavy straight away using blunt pencil strokes using blunt pencils and all of that sort of stuff and finally a common mistake with the hair is doing flyaway hairs and little bits of hairs around the outside but making them too sort of harsh too thick and too short because they are way too short for this hairstyle now quite often I talk about this crafting knife technique that I use and a common mistake I find people make is they find that they're tearing their paper and so you don't want to be cutting into the paper with your crafting knife. You're just using it to scrape away very lightly the layers of coloured pencil. You're not actually trying to cut into the paper. So they are a few mistakes and things to avoid but you'll see probably better as I do this one what I mean and the differences and the solutions you can make. So let's start off with the eyes and I'm sure you can tell straight away how much kind of slower I'm taking this, how much softer everything is. I will be building this, uh, this up in multiple layers and I'm always keeping my pencils nice and sharp all of the time. I like to build up the shadows first, getting the structure of each of the different parts of the eye and the eyebrow. As you can see, I've got in a very light indication of where the eyebrows are, but I've not done a really heavy sort of shape for them. I'm building up lots of shadows and lots of colours in the iris. I'm going around and darkening up the outside of the iris, not with black, but with a darker brown. And with the white of the eye, I'm actually using a lot more greys than I did before. A lot of the time, the white of the eye is very grey, so you're going to need to use different values of grey within that white of the eye. And you'll notice as you build up more and more skin tones around the eye, it doesn't actually look that dark when you put grey in the white of the eye. When you do it at this stage, you might think, oh, this looks a bit too dark. But when you get everything else in, you realise that it's the perfect colour. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm also building up lots of darker skin tones on the crease but I'm not using necessarily just black, I'm using browns as well to make it look a lot more natural. And another thing that you'll want to do is pay attention to some highlights in the eyes and the shapes of those highlights because that is what is going to give your eye a really glassy, watery effect. Like it's wet and shiny. So I really, really spent time picking what colours I wanted to use for the skin tone. I've got a whole kind of tutorial series on Patreon about how to pick colours for skin tones. But I really looked and studied the reference photo before just going in with lots of different colours and thought about what colours I needed to use for each area to make it all look kind of succinct with each other and transition nicely between the different areas. And it is really important to make sure that you get those colours accurate at the start so you need to figure out what your undertones for your skin is and the colors and the hues and all of that sort of stuff so another thing is when it comes to the actual waterline and everything like that when you do the waterline the eyelashes are coming out from the waterline so you need to have that bit of skin between your eye and the eyelashes 
Now I'm moving on to the eyebrow and you can see that instead of just doing a shape I'm doing lots of individual strands for the eyebrows and that's really important to make it look like hair growing out of the skin. It's not just a uniformed block shape on top of the skin, they are hairs growing out of the skin. So I'm looking at the direction of the eyebrow hairs and also how they kind of clump together where they're more dense and I'm just building it up with browns. I also used that crafted knife just to pull up some little highlighted areas. And they are nowhere near as dramatic and harsh as the other eyebrows were. They're really soft and they just look and work well with the skin. They aren't in your face, they're not really dark and they are a lot more natural looking. So this portrait took me nine hours whereas the other one took 50 minutes. So a big thing to making your drawings better, especially with colored pencils, is really taking your time and actually spending the time to build up the layers of colors because you need to use a lot of colors for your portraits. Otherwise it won't look realistic. You'll be able to tell that it's rushed because if you have lots of colors then it adds a lot more depth and realism to your work. So I'm just building up some of the shadows around the eyes that because she's got hair covering like over the top of some of her skin, you, there are some shadows that are cast onto the face. So I'm just looking at those shadows and building up the appropriate sort of shadow tones. And when I did the eyelashes, I curved them. I made sure my pencil was really sharp so they're nice and thin and not too clumpy. Now moving on to the nose, when I did the nostrils you can see I'm not doing lots of circles and I didn't do them really dark straight away. I like to build up to those shadowed areas and I'm just using some of my shadow tones that I've selected which I also use for the shadow tones around the eyes just to get in the general structure of the nose. I really like to build up the colours in layers working very lightly at the start and then building up to those darker areas if I need to. I really don't like to go in really really dark straight away because I feel like when you do it this way, you are more in control of it, there's less room for error, because if you burnish straight away with a really dark pencil, then with colour pencil it's really hard to kind of reverse that and still manage to get a smooth tone. What I do when I blend is I lay the initial layers down in a certain direction, so maybe vertically, and then when I go and burnish and blend it out, I actually blend in the opposite direction to help kind of blend and soften out those initial pencil strokes. You can get really, really soft blending if you apply your layers really lightly and don't kind of do that messy back and forth pencil stroke motion. Because when you apply a lot of pressure to your pencil, you will get those stubborn pencil strokes that are burnished into the paper and are really hard to kind of get out. Moving on to the mouth, I have done a darker center line, but as you can see, it's not straight, it's going with the kind of curves and folds of the lips, and I'm building up more and more shadows on the lips than I did last time. I haven't outlined everywhere, it's all very soft, but I am using some shadow tones to build up the different kind of forms of the mouth. I want it to look three-dimensional and full, and so again, I choose I picked colors that worked well with the lips. I did a lot of research when I was picking my colors from my color chart as to what would give a most natural result. I didn't just pick up the first colors that I seen that were like pink and brown. And also I did some highlights that worked well with the lips. They were, there wasn't that much texture, but when there was, I've made sure that it looks soft. I haven't done lots of really straight lines for the lips where the cracks are because her lips were quite smooth. There were some folds in the top lips. And as you can see, I've got that texture and those details in without it looking really harsh and really rough and everything looks very soft. I also built up some skin around the mouth and another thing that you wanna try and do is if your lips look natural, if they haven't got lots of makeup on, you wanna make sure that they ease into the skin around them very softly. There isn't really a harsh line between the lips and the skin around it. So really, really try to actually ease some of those colors into each other so it looks really nice and soft. There is also quite a sh quite often there's a shadow underneath the bottom lip as well so I tried to get in that shadow and if you want to create some more little textures then again you can go in with that crafter knife and just use that to add some extra details. There is also a kind of highlight just above the top lip on the cupid's bow and there's a bit of a highlight surrounding the top lip and a bit of the bottom lip as well but don't go too overboard with that otherwise it will look very sort of harsh and kind of artificial 
And now we are moving on to the skin. This is probably one of my favorite things to draw is fill in the skin because at the moment it looks very strange and it can look very sort of rough until you get in all of that skin and it really comes together. So when you're drawing a lot of skin, it can be tempting to rush through it and just going very messily, but you really do need to spend the time getting this smooth because it's really obvious if you do your skin kind of messily, it kind of really detracts from the whole portrait. So really try and spend the time focusing on getting these smooth layers. As you can see, when I wanted to get a highlighted area, I didn't fully burnish in that area. What I did was I applied a little bit of the other colours that I needed there. So I laid a bit of that skin tone in that area, but not as much as the other more mid-tone and shadowed areas. So that when I added the highlighted colour, there is still a lot of room and tooth of the paper for it to grip onto that highlighted colour. So you get a much brighter highlight. So I'm just kind of doing the same thing with all of this skin. On the right side of her face, it was more shadowed. So you kind of need to notice where it's more shadowed and when it's where it's more highlighted. So you can pick the colors accordingly and decide where it needs to be more shadowed. So the skin on her face roughly took me about an hour and a half to do to about an hour and 45 minutes. So it does take a while, but it's really worth spending that extra time, especially building up the layers because it is, it does take a lot more time to try and reverse any mistakes you make than if you just do it right and slowly at the start and really take your time with it. If you feel like it takes too long, then colour pencil might not be the medium for you. It is a very slow and it's a very slow medium to work with and you do need a lot of patience to use coloured pencils. Whereas if you want to do stuff quickly, there are much better alternatives for doing portraits realistically, but in a quicker time period. So now I'm just again adding the highlights where I need to and I can because I haven't fully burnished in those areas. And another thing is if you have done and blended out your skin tone but you need to maybe add say a bit more pink to the cheeks to add a bit of a glow, you can glaze the colours over the top of this to add those subtle kind of different colour tones and skin tones. But what I recommend is using the side of your pencil so that you don't interrupt all of the perfect soft blending that you've already done so that it doesn't kind of pull up that different layers of color that you've already put down and it keeps everything still smooth. Quite often when I'm layering my first initial layers to avoid putting a lot of pressure onto the pencil, I will hold the pencil quite far back and use the side of the pencil to shade so that I'm not getting random pencil strokes that are a bit more stubborn and have a bit more pressure. It helps to keep an even pressure across the whole of the pencil and prevents you getting those stubborn pencil strokes so that you can blend it out very smoothly to get a really polished look. Because the forehead didn't have that much shine on it, I didn't need to kind of preserve many areas for highlight. It was okay to just go over those areas with the buff titanium or the white that I had and actually just blend over the top of that. So also all of the materials that I am using for this are linked in the description with links to where you can buy them if you want to try them out. And also keep in mind that this works for like lots of other colour pencils. You don't just have to use the one that I'm using, the ones that I'm using, which is the Caran Dash Luminance. You know, this works for any colour pencils. It works better for the softer colour pencils like Prismacolor and Caran Dash but it will work for other colour pencils and these tips and things that I'm telling you apply to everything with colours. So moving on to the hair and as you can see very quickly, I'm just doing this very slowly and lightly. That's the same kind of thing that you'll see throughout the whole of the portrait. Slow and steady is the key and building up in light layers is also so important. I'm using brown a lot rather than the black. I will use the black a little bit for the darker shadows as you can see now because the top of the hair was quite dark and so you can use black if you need to. But I also recommend layering other colors over the top of it so that it isn't just black so that you're adding other values over the top to make it look a little bit more natural. 
But what I did was I looked at the hair in terms of clumps and forms and I looked at where there was more shadows and so I layered more black in those areas and basically what I'm doing is I'm adding a lot of the detail with this crafting knife and the crafting knife can be so useful for getting these little details but you have to try and make sure that you're going gentle on this knife, you're not trying to really scrape or dig into the paper otherwise you will rip it so make sure you don't just go straight into a portrait using this tool make sure you practice a lot with it first rather than just going straight in on your masterpiece with it but it is such a good tool to use and I've seen a lot of people use it and get very nice results with it so it's definitely worth testing out because it's quite a cheap tool as well Another thing that you want to make sure you're doing is making the hair look natural as it comes from the middle parting. So you don't want it to just all come from the same point. You need to integrate those hairs into the middle parting. So it looks very natural that the hair is grown out of that area. And also in the don't version, the hair looks very much like a wig. There wasn't much shadow for the hairline or a few little stray hairs going off into the skin. And so for this one, I've made it look a lot more natural by actually adding some loose hairs going down into the face and over the face and adding a lot more shadow for that hairline. And it's those subtle little details that is going to make it look a lot more realistic. So I'm going to repeat the same process for the bottom of the hair, but the bottom of the hair was a lot lighter. It was a bit blonder at the top of the hair. It was darker. And then as we got towards the bottom, it became lighter and lighter. So what I did was I used mostly the brown for the darker shadows rather than the black because again, the hair was lighter at the bottom. But then I used other colours like the raw umbers which made a really great shadow tone for this brown hair and also the brown ochres and the brown ochre 10% and a bit of the burnt ochre but it doesn't matter what colours you're using you need to just use your colour chart to pick those colours. The key thing is to build it up slowly and look at the hair in terms of clumps. And as you can see, from layering and layering, the more you layer, the smoother it gets. And then again, I just went and I made those clumps not look so uniformed by using the knife to pull up all of those flyaway hairs, make some hairs that go over and span across those different clumps of hairs. And so it is important to add those subtle details like the flyaway hairs to break up those clumps. But it is also important not to try and draw in every single strand of hair. So now when I'm adding the flyaway hairs around the outside, I use an eraser to actually lighten quite a lot of them up and I make sure that they're really subtle. But overall, here was the final don't version. It's very messy. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is don't use your hand to actually rub away the colour pencil. Otherwise, you can get those little bits sticking to it. And this is the do version. I really hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you thought of it and what you learnt. So, like I said, as well as this tutorial, I have got loads of other tutorials on my Patreon. Whether that's graphite, colour pencil, whether that's portraits like this realistically and features or whether that's actually animals using markers, solvent, colour pencil, graphite, make sure you check that out. There is a little link at the end here and in the description. But if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.